Ding dong YouTube, welcome back to the channel, The Jobless Coder, and today I'm going to show you how to code something awesome in 100 lines of code or less. It's called the Lorenz Attractor, and it looks a little something like this. Now this here, guys, is what's known as a Lorenz Attractor, and as you can see, it's this moving point system. It's actually a calculus function that's doing this. This is a third year calculus topic, is different. Uh, systems of differential equations and this will produce this kind of cool effect and the reason for making this video is because I've actually had five or six hour long debates with other people in this industry who say that computer science is hard and that you can't just go and, and get a job if you don't know what you're doing. But I want to try and break the stigma that coding is actually not hard at all. I want to be able to show people how easy it actually is. And this is actually a philosophy that Bill Gates talks about it in terms of reading and writing. There is very little people left in the world who don't know how to to read and write, and he believes that there will come a point in the future where coding is just the same. Literally everyone is going to know how to code. So this is a project that I actually built two years ago when I was in my third year of a computer science program because there was some kind of global-wide initiative called Learn to Code Day or something like that, and for it my professor approached me and he asked me if I could write a simple program that anybody could learn to sit down and code in five or ten minutes and so I sat and thought about all the things that I could write in a very quick and simple program that can be written in five minutes and I had just learned this concept of the Lorenz attractor like a week before in calculus class and I realized how simple it was and how you can take these complex differential equations and turn it into something quite elegant like this and so I wanted to show people exactly what could be done and I wrote this program it was only 60 lines of code to create this, so I'm going to now show you how I actually did it. Now the Lorenz attractor, the attractor portion of it means that this moving dot, as you can see based on the diagram, is attracted to these two centers and it changes dynamically between them. And this has actually been used as a popular method of describing the visualization of the butterfly effect. Now the reason for that being is because the butterfly effect in pop culture is basically the idea that the very smallest details in changing systems, whether that be the weather, whether that be the decisions that you make in your life, they can impact greatly over time. And so these are the equations here that you can see that describe the movement or the changes in the Lorenz attractor. And starting with the initial values here of 28, 10, and 8 over 3, you can see that this is the result you get. Now these initial factors would be in the concept of the butterfly effect, variables that can change and impact these larger systems over time. Now in order to take the equations of the Lorenz attractor, these three equations, and turn them into something useful, it's actually fairly simple. You have dx over dt, dy over dt, and dz over dt, and these are calculus equations. What is the change of x? The change change of y and the change of z with respect to time being dt. Well, what is time? Time is just a constant factor. It's a constant change in time. So to turn these into usable equations that you can program, all you have to do is take the dt and multiply by it on each side of the equation for all three equations, which means that the dt gets pulled over to the far right side dx, dy, and dz, you know what the next state change for all three factors is going to be. And guys, if you're wondering what these funny little uh, um, symbols are in the equations, this funny looking one, this funny looking p, and the b, this is just sigma, rho, and beta, which are the three constant factors up here in the initialization of the equation. But for simplicity-wise in the code, I'm just going to resort to a, b, and c for those. So over in the code here, I'm using processing for this. And the reason I'm using processing is because if you want to do it in some other language like C++, then you're going to have to spend probably two or three hours learning about linkers and libraries, how to write make files, how to install uh, compilers, and how to run that in the terminal program, and all of this overhead just to get started, just to make the program run and function. But the reason I'm using processing is because it works directly out of the box. Everything that it comes with is just right there. And 
and the base language it uses is actually Java, but it comes with a lot of predefined functions as part of the processing tool for drawing shapes and lines and various different visual graphic stuff that would be a lot harder if you were to write it from scratch using some other uh, uh, graphics tool or graphics library in a different language. The other thing about processing is because it is so simple and easy to use, it is great for prototyping. So this is the challenge, is to build an, a Lorenz attractor in 100 lines of code or less, and I'm going to show you how. You're going to want to start by defining a few variables. So we're going to need float A, B, and C, as I mentioned before. You're also going to need some numbers for DX, for DY, and for DZ. As well, you're going to need a second number for DT, and I'm going to add in here a degrees, which I'm going to use a bit later as I show you how to do this. So inside the processing tool, void setup is going to be the first function that gets called. It's like your main function. And so inside the setup, I'm going to start by initializing the, the space that we're working in. Now I added in a few extra numbers here. I added in X, Y, and Z. These are going to be the starting coordinates for the Lorenz attractor. And as you can see, Y and Z are both initialized to zero. The reason that I set X to be 0 0.01 is because then if all of them were zero, if I started at the origin point, then the next state would also be zero because it's based on a multiplication equation. So none of these would change if all of them were zero. At least one of them has to start with a value that's either positive or negative. Now the draw function gets called every single frame inside the processing program. And so there's approximately 30 frames in a second, it gets called roughly 30 times a second. And every single time it's going to start by initializing the background to a color zero, which is black. And then it's going to set the center point to the center point of the uh, 3D space, width and height. And then I set the scale to 5. And then here, the rotate with degrees. Um, I want to have the screen be able to rotate, as you've seen at the beginning of the video. So I basically just have a function here that says, well, the mouse is pressed, add to the degrees. So then the degrees, being a global constant, is going to continue to add to it. It's going to set the rotation value to the degrees, which is going to allow you to spin around and see the Lorenz attractor from different angles. Now, if I just run the program right now, you're going to see this black screen that is of size 800 by 600. And you can't see it now because there's nothing inside. But if I click the mouse, the camera is actually rotating. And now the next step in the process is to implement the equations, these equations, into the code. <laughs> Alright, so now as you can see, the dx, the dy, and the dz, they all match the equations here. So that is the equation for the Lorenz attractor. The only thing left that needs to be done is to add dx, dy, and dz to the initial values, the values that we set um, as the origin point, so that they will update every single time the draw function is updated. Okay. Now that's all we have here. Now what we need is we need to store every single value for each point in the Lorenz attractor. And so in order to do that, we're going to need an array list of p vectors. And we're going to call that point. P vector point vector ah that's why Java is a case sensitive language so we need to do capital P capital V and then vector 
So it's a list of vectors of points. So for this, we're just going to say for every single point, add new p vector of x, y, and z. So we're at 39 lines of code. And I just noticed right here, this should be z. So now if we run the program, you can see that the attractor is actually working. And if you click, the screen camera is rotating like we defined before. Um, now over here we have begin shape and then we have each vertex of the shape is pulled from our vector of points. I'm setting the color to being white and then I end the shape. And so realistically this is all we need to make the Lorenz attractor work. It's less than 50 lines of code. But I want to show you how to add that cool color effect that you've seen at the beginning of the video. <laughs> Now when you run the program, you can see the color is red. And that's because I defined the red, green, blue value here to start at red. And then the other two being green and blue, they're at zero. Up at the top, I initialized an integer array of size three. So position zero is red, position one is green, and position two is blue. And I'm gonna pass it through the update function every single time. Now there's nothing in there, so the color isn't changing at the moment, but when I put the logic inside, then it'll start to change. Now guys, I know that this right here that I've written looks really confusing, but I'll explain it to you. It's actually a very simple condensed logic function that I once devised that will give you each color in succession of the colors of the rainbow. Starts with red and then goes orange, yellow, green, blue, and then to indigo and violet. And so it's actually a two part equation here. And for every single color, red, green, and blue, we're going to update each color each frame. So the first half here, each color is basically based on the next color in the sequence. So because of this i plus 1 and then modulus 3, to make sure that you don't go out of the array bounds, red is going to be based on green, green is going to be based on blue, and the next state of blue is going to be based on the current state of red. So you basically say that if the current state of the next color is equal to 0, and this color that you're on is not equal to 255, continue to increase the value of this color. Otherwise, if the next state of the color is at 255 and this color is not equal to zero, continue to decrease the state of this color. And I'll show you what happens when I run the program here, is it's actually going to go through the sequences of colors in the rainbow. So you can see it starts here with red, and then it goes to yellow, and then a bit of green, and then from there it's going to start condensing in here with blue. And if you can click, you can spin around a bit. And then when it comes out of the circle, it's going to start turning into purple. And then it'll again, it'll start back at red, and soon it'll change into yellow. And that's how you get the colors to get this cool color special effect. Now that, yep, yeah, it started back to yellow and now it's going to green. So what's going to happen is as you uh, run this simulation over time, the darker colors like the blues and the greens are going to condense near the center of the circle and the other colors like the reds and the oranges and the yellows, they're going to start to condense on the outside of the Lorenz attractor. So as you can see, now the simulation's been running for a bit, you get this really cool effect with the color. And the process starts to slow down a bit because it's obviously taking a lot of memory at this point. So the spinning effect is not quite as efficient. But you can see, it's kind of hard to tell where it is at the point. Now that there's so much color, it's hard to tell where the front end, that part moving. 
um, is in the attractor. So I actually want to add one final bit to the code here that is going to give me some 3D rotation. So we're going to be able to see it from different angles. And it's just essentially this. This is going to rotate on the x-axis. This is going to rotate on the y-axis. So they're both going to rotate together, which is going to allow us to look at the um, simulation a lot easier um, in 3D space. Uh, there you're kind of stuck at one angle looking over top. So now that the uh, simulation is running, when I click here, it's going to rotate around this central point here. So you can see now it's a lot easier to tell that this is actually all happening in 3D. So there you guys have it. That is how you build the Lorenz attractor in... let's have a look here. What is it? 60 lines of code or less. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to have access to this, I'm actually going to post the code for this project on GitHub. Um, if you have any other ideas of cool programs that could be built in the processing tool in 100 lines, uh, make sure to leave a comment and maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. Um, other than that, thank you for watching. Have a good day.